Hey everybody and welcome to today's video. So my name is Megan and I'm a second year geography student. Um, I think that's the first time I've ever said that out loud but I'm going into second year in September and in my first year I was in catered halls. So the hall that I was in was Cavendish Hall and I had the best time there. I am actually so gutted that I'm not going back there in September because I'm in a student house but my time at Cavendish was great and I'm here to talk to you today about my experience of living in catered halls. A lot of the halls are situated around the Downs. So around the Downs, you've got Derby Hall, Lincoln Hall, Lenton and Wortley, Cripps and Hugh Stew. And then some of the other halls are dotted around. So Cavendish, Ancaster and Willoughby are sort of near the West entrance. So near Co-op. If you have a friend in one hall and you're in a different one, you're only going to have a maximum 10 minute walk, I'd say, to reach them. So literally, there it's like its own little mini village. And some of them are quite big, where you'd have opportunity to meet literally hundreds of people. And then some are a little bit smaller with only a couple hundred. So why did I choose catered halls? What are some of the reasons that you might want to choose a catered hall over a self-catered hall where you have a kitchen and you can cook your own food? Well, first of all, I thought it would be a great way to make friends because I thought if I'm eating breakfast and dinner with these people every day then that is already ready-made friends who are all going to be there if there's like hundreds of people in the dining hall at once surely I'm gonna find one friend to sit with do you know what I mean and I also like the idea of being on campus so my course geography is on the uni park campus and I thought if I've got lectures then it'll be nice to just have quite a short walk to go there I just like the idea of being around everything else and obviously the food was a big thing for me I can't really cook. I'm learning though, because obviously I have to cook for myself in less than two weeks time. So that'll be interesting. I'm quite lazy if I'm being honest. I like the idea of my food being on the table so that I can spend the rest of my time doing lectures, making friends, sort of settling into uni life. And I thought the cooking can come a bit later. That responsibility I'll have in second year rather than in first year. It just seemed like the best option for me at the time. I know it's not for everyone, but I personally think even in hindsight, catered halls was a great option for me. So now I'm going to talk about the actual logistics of living in a catered hall. So what times do you have to go out for breakfast and what times you have to go for dinner? What happens with lunch? So we're going to talk all about that now. Breakfast, I believe was 7.30 to 9.30. So you did have a good two hour slot. You didn't have to get up too early. And there's nothing saying that you have to get up and sit in the dining hall when you know, be all ready. Literally people used to come in their pajamas or they just take some cereal and take it back to their room or sit in the JCR. It was quite chill. So for lunch, you wouldn't have it sat down in your hall because obviously they recognise that people are going to be going to lectures, they're going to be meeting friends, you're going to have stuff to do, you might be in town. So you have £25 to spend throughout the whole week. So you have um, on your student card, they load £25 onto it. I think it's called like a meal bites card. And that basically means that every day you get five pounds to spend which is quite a lot for lunch i think there are so many places on campus that accept your meal card so in a lot of the halls they have their own cafes so i had cavendish cafe we had willoughby hall cafe which is called vespa derby has echo hugh stewart has latitude all the different halls sort of do different variations of food so cavendish hall for lunch was really good for wraps and soup and pitta and hummus hugh stewart did an amazing katsu curry Vespa did pasta, lasagna, anything like that, pizza. In a week, you don't have to go to exactly the same place. You could try out the different menu options. And also in the main Portland building, which is the student union, that is where you'd find most of the food outlets. So one of our favorites me and my friends went to quite a lot was Portland Cafe, which is the student union run cafe. It's like a little coffee shop. It's so nice in there. They do such good hot drinks. They did good paninis. They did really good vegan options. Starbucks was also a popular one that we like to go to. Um, apparently there's a subway for this year, which is so exciting. It's so sad they didn't have it last year. But yeah, there were loads of different options. If you don't spend your meal card within the week, then you can spend it in the spa, which is the on-campus supermarket. I would often not spend five pounds every day. So I'd have like three pounds, four pounds to spend at the end of each week in the spa supermarket. And you might be wondering why I said you have lunch five days a week when there's obviously 
through seven days in a week but that's because on weekends you have brunch so that obviously mixes breakfast and lunch i appreciate that students might like to have a little bit of a lion so you have brunch which is from 11 o'clock until one o'clock and that is a full fry up if you want obviously if you don't want that you can have toast or cereal or whatever floats your boat they do vegan options as well it was a little weekend tradition and then dinner was served from five to seven always plenty of food options as well there wasn't just one set meal and if you didn't like it that was it there was more options so i'm going to talk about the actual menu for dinner which is something that i was so worried about but then when i got to uni i realized it would be literally completely okay so the menu worked on a two-week rotation i believe um or maybe it was three weeks so every week there'd be a sort of different menu and then that rotation would then get switched up at the start of a new term so in january and in april we got a completely new menu so you were always trying new things and it never got dull because they'd always switch up the meals. I'm just going to give you some examples of the food and pop some photos up. Towards the end of the year they started doing katsu curry. We also had a roast pretty much every Sunday or at least some sort of meat, veg and potato. We had shepherd's pie, we had like other sort of meat, steak pie wraps which were really good. We had burgers served with onion rings and chips as well. We'd have lasagna, we'd have tacos. I hope that the photo sort of gave you an insight into what would be there. There was often dessert, but there was a lot of cakes and ice cream, like apple crumble. There was always a piece of fruit that you could take as well. And if you didn't fancy the main meal, then every day there was either a jacket potato or pasta. If you were busy one night and you missed dinner, then apparently you could get a microwave meal from the kitchen if you told them in advance, or you could get a cold option. So they might keep a sandwich back for you or something. I personally never did this because of Obviously, it was locked down for a lot of my year, so I never missed dinner. Also, if dietary requirements is something that you're worried about, then you shouldn't be. As long as you let the hall know just as you start, then they'll keep an eye out and make sure that if you only eat halal, then you'll get halal options vegan, veggie, if you've got a nut allergy. But if I was being super fussy one day, didn't fancy what the option was, then you have pantries on every corridor. So on my corridor, we had two pantries. Um, I think we had one between eight, which was a pretty decent amount. Um, and the pantries had a microwave and a toaster and a sink. And you also had a kettle in your rooms if you wanted to do a pot noodle or cup of soup. I found that I didn't really reach for the pantry very often. I honestly think I made myself a sandwich once. But it was just just handy to have it there if you wanted to make your own hot chocolate your own tea you could do that in your room without having to trek to the dining hall but obviously if cooking is a big part of your life and you quite enjoy it and you are super fussy and just know that you want your own food then self-catered might be a better option so i'm going to shut up about the food now because i feel like i've spent so long talking about that and we're going to talk about the social side of living at a catered hall so formals they are a big part of catered hall life i mean they do have them in self-catered halls but i think it's quite different for catered halls because like you actually have it in your own hall and it's just really exciting we had a christmas formal which was under the guidelines at the time so it wasn't quite what it could have been but it was still really good we got dressed up we had a really nice roast and a really nice dessert so i really loved that and it's just nice because they play festive music and we had to go home early that term because that was what the government was suggesting at the time. So it was nice to just do a little sort of festive farewell. Also, we did an end of term, like an end of year formal, which was so much fun. We didn't know if that was gonna happen, but restrictions lifted enough so that we could have a formal. And that was one of my favorite nights. And then people went into the JCR after. You're gonna hear a lot about the JCR and it's good if you actually know what that means. So the JCR is basically a common room, a bit similar to a common room that you might have had in sixth form. So you'd have like sofas, a pool table, maybe a football table if you're lucky, um, a TV, and it's just, it's big enough to accommodate a lot of people in. In the beginning, it was the place, actually, I went in there on my first day within the first couple of hours of being there and just socialised and met people. When there'd be football on, people would sit downstairs and watch football, people would put movies on. There's just lots of different opportunities for meeting like-minded people, and it soon started to feel like home quite quickly as soon as I decorated my room 
you have quite a bit of freedom with decorating your room command strips are a must because they don't leave any marks on the wall at all you know when you're at home with your family and after dinner you'll sort of maybe wash up together um, and you know they might be like at eight we're all going to watch something on tv if you want to come down and watch tv with us i was quite worried that i go to uni and that after dinner at seven everyone would be like bye and then you don't see anyone for the rest of the night but honestly a lot of nights unless we were all busy with coursework we'd go and sit in someone's room and just chat and the amount of times i'd just be walking somewhere and i'd bump into someone in the corridor and we'd end up standing there for half an hour just having a chat most times i went into the pantry i would bump into someone on my corridor so it's just a lovely community vibe like we did so many things in our rooms although obviously we didn't have a kitchen we really utilized our rooms so we did movie nights we'd literally just put on high school musical on someone's laptop and sit there for a few hours birthdays we loved we'd always get a cake for someone so we'd always do a takeaway for someone's birthday just to make it a little bit special cater tools is such a unique experience that you might only experience once in your life so it's nice to just make the most of it and i have such fond memories to look back at and then not only did it feel like home but it also felt really safe so to get into the hall you needed your student id to tap you in and then obviously you had a key to your room uh, there was also a porter on and our porter pa lovely guy. It was just so easy if you were ever having a problem, if you locked yourself out of your room or there's something wrong with your room or people were making a bit too much noise and it was around exam time, then you could literally just ring up the porter and be like, can you come and sort out this issue please and they would be there so quickly and even if the porter isn't there then there's always a number that you can ring at literally 24 7. so cater tools isn't for everyone but if you are someone that wants ready-made friends who you can go and have meals with every single day if you want somewhere that's going to feel really safe if you want somewhere where your meals are just there for you waiting, then Cater Tools will be perfect for you. As I said, I have no regrets. I would 100% go back to Cater Tools if I could, but I'm ready for a new adventure at a student house. If you have any more questions about Cater Tools, then just leave them below and we'll get back to you. If you'd like to follow my university journey and see some vlogs, a room tour of Cater Tools, then all of that is on my own channel, which is Megan Mahoney. Thank you so much for watching. I really hope that you enjoyed this video. And if if you're moving into catered halls or if you're thinking about it then i know that you're gonna have a great time thanks for watching bye